All right. In this podcast, we're going to talk about bond length and bond energy. All right. So let's talk a little bit more about covalent bonds first. Um, in covalent bonds, electrons in each atom are attracted to the nucleus of the opposite atom. The electrons in each atom repel each other, and then the nuclei also re repel each other. They reach a distance that they are at the lowest possible energy, so the repulsions are the lowest. Um, and then this distance between the two nuclei is going to be what we call the bond length. Okay. All right. So here you see two hydrogen atoms approaching one another. Their uh, electrons repel, as do their nucleus, but the electron of this one is attracted to the nucleus of this one as the electron of this one is attracted to the nucleus of that one. So that's what actually causes them to come together and then they reach a optimal distance and then we get our bond length. All right, so here's a little graph. All right, in this graph, um, it's potential energy versus distance. Okay, so we have, hold on a second. Oh, there it went. Okay. So we have um, the internuclear distance, that's the distance between the two nucleuses, and then we have our energy, okay? So you see that as they're far apart, we have very low energy because they are not affecting one another. All right, and then you see that as they get closer together, the energy increases. And then you're going to reach this lowest point of energy down here. Okay, here's our lowest point of energy that we have um, with the two molecules closest together. And then we see over here when they get too close together, the energy rises back up. Okay, so far apart, low energy, they get a little bit closer, you have even lower energy, and then you get all the way down here. This is the lowest possible energy that we have. And then if they get too close together, the energy starts to go back up. Okay, so there is a balance. All right, the distance between, um, on this graph, the internuclear distance is red right here. Okay, this is the bond length on the graph. All right, and then this right here tells us our bond energy on the graph. All right, so to summarize, the bond length is the distance between the um, atoms in each uh, molecule, the bonds, the nuclei, and it's the distance of minimum potential energy, so lowest energy, where attractive and repulsive forces are balanced. Okay, and here's another little picture to show you uh, the balance between the two nuclei. All right, let's talk about bond order. Okay, so you have three different carbon-oxygen bonds here. You have a carbon-oxygen double bond, you have a carbon-oxygen um, single bond, and then you have a triple bond. Okay, well, which would you expect to be the strongest bond here? What do you think? Here we're sharing two pairs of electrons, here we're sharing one pair of electrons, and here we're sharing three pairs of electrons. Okay, so you're going to have the strongest bond where you have the um, most pairs shared. Okay, so when you're sharing three pairs of electrons, that's going to be your strongest. So triple is the strongest bond. Okay, following in similar fashion, the next best is going to be the one where you're sharing two. So that's going to be our double bond. All right, and lastly, the weakest bond is going to be the single bond. Okay, so the more pairs you share, the stronger the bond will be. All right, well, which would you expect to have the shortest bond length? Okay, well, the more you share, the closer you have to be. Okay, so the shortest bond is going to be the triple. Oops. Okay, followed by the double and then the single. So single is going to be the farthest apart because they're only sharing one pair. Double will be a little closer because they're sharing two pairs. And triple will be the closest because you're sharing three pairs, okay? And that's what bond order is all about. All right, now let's get to this topic of bond energy. Um, bond energy is the energy required for the dissociation of the bond, so the breaking of the bond. Um, this is the net 
energy of stabilization, stabilization of the bond compared to the two separated atoms. Typically, when you see bond energy, it's given on a per mole basis. So usually you'll see bond energy in like kilojoules per mole. Okay. All right, so let's talk a little about the combustion of methane. All right, methane is CH4, and then combustion is when you combine it with the oxygen and it produces water and CO2, carbon dioxide. All right, this reaction, all reactions, involve bond breaking and then bond making as atoms swap partners, if you will. Okay, so we're going to break these bonds over here and then we're going to make these over here. All right. Um, bond, I skipped a page, there we go. All right, bond breaking is um, considered endothermic process, meaning that you it's always required. You have to put energy in to break your bond because you are taking it to a less stable state. Okay, so bond breaking is always going to be uh, endothermic process, whereas bond making, the making of bonds, um, energy is always released. Okay, now what determines if a reaction is endo or exothermic is how big the difference is between the energy that is needed to break the bonds and the energy that is produced when the bonds are made. Okay, so the difference between those, if it's positive, then you're going to have a gain in energy in the system, so that's an endothermic process, and if the total is negative, then the entire process will be exothermic because you had extra energy that you were able to release. Okay? All right, so we're going to start talking about bond energy, okay, um, specifically with methane. So let's look at some example bond energies. This I pulled straight from your practice set. So this top table tells us all the bond energies. Uh, these are single bonds. And then down here at the bottom, we have the energies of multiple bonds. Okay, and we're going to use this to attempt to calculate the energy produced from the combustion of methane. Okay, so here's methane, CH4, and we're going to combust it. Before we can do that, though, let's talk a little bit more about what we're actually going to be looking at. We're going to determine the difference in the number of bonds that are broken and the number of bonds that are made. Okay, so the difference between the total of broken bonds and the total of bonds made. And when I'm saying total, I'm talking about total energy. All right, first thing you want to do is you want to draw some structures. So you should draw the structure of CH4. I will do it for you very quickly. All right, so here's going to be our methane. All right, here's going to be our oxygen, double O. All right, and we have a double bond there. Okay, all right, and then we're going to make H2O, which is water. All right, and we're also going to make carbon dioxide. Y'all hear my baby in the background? He is very mad right now. All right, so um, when you are combusting a methane, you're going to have four carbon-hydrogen bonds. Okay, so we're going to need to find the um, energy of a carbon-hydrogen bond here in a second from that chart. All right, and then we're also going to have to use the oxygen-oxygen double bond. We're going to have two of those. Woo! Look at that two. All right, and we're going to subtract all of that from the sum of what we are making. So we're going to make two hydrogen-oxygen single bonds per water molecule. And we're going to have uh, two water molecules, so that's a total of four. 
hydrogen oxygen bonds okay and then we just got to include this little CO2 over here. So we have C double bonded to O twice. So that's two C double bonded to O bonds. All right, and then we're just gonna work out all the math. Okay, all right, so now we need to go back and put in the values for our carbon hydrogen bond. See our carbon hydrogen bond is 413. Our oxygen oxygen double bond is 498. All right, and then we got to figure out our products over here. All right, so we got four. Hydrogen oxygen bonds, let's see, hydrogen oxygen are 463. And our carbon oxygen double bonds are 732. All right, we're going to work out all that math. Okay, so the total of this one is. Let's see, 2,658. Okay. And the total over here for the for the react or for the products over here is going to be 3316. Okay, and then this is going to be we're going to subtract these two. So the total energy for the bond is negative 658. Okay, and that is in units of kilojoules per mole. Did y'all hear how excited this chemistry makes my little baby? He's screaming. He's so excited, he's screaming. All right. And let's see, it's negative, so if it's negative, it's losing energy, so this is going to be an overall exothermic reaction, okay? And that's all there is to bond energy right there.